Hey folks, welcome. Here we discuss real stories by real people. Today we have the story of a man who finds out his girlfriend has been using his money to go on dates with her boyfriend. Let's see how it goes. Story 1. I30 male met Emily30 on a dating app at a point when I was looking for a serious relationship. Her profile indicated that she was only looking for a serious relationship and it immediately caught my interest. Emily works at a firm where she has a male coworker who seemed quite close to her. I found out about him because she always talked about him helping her with work stuff. I'm not the type that would get jealous or intimidated over a guy because I'm quite confident in myself. Also, since he was already in the picture before I came along, I couldn't outrightly ask Emily to cut ties with him. But just to avoid unnecessary stories, I simply requested that she reduce the amount of time they spent together. As our relationship progressed, Emily started frequently asking me for money. Mind you, money's not my problem. I'm very comfortable. Sometimes the amount she requested were ridiculously high, but I gave in because I wanted to make her happy and I believed she was a good person who helped her family out a lot. Or so I thought. Things started getting weird after a few months of us being together. I began to notice that Emily was constantly asking me for money. It reached a point where I felt compelled to confront her about it. I explained that she also had a job and should be able to take care of her basic needs on her own. Unfortunately, this conversation led to her getting angry and crying. According to her, the only reason she asks me for money is because I'm his boyfriend. She felt safe with me. She also mentioned that she had some personal expenses she needed to take care of and her income couldn't bear at all. I ended up apologizing. However, I couldn't shake off the feeling that something was off somewhere. My main concern was understanding where all the money I had given her was going. She didn't even tell me about the personal expenses she was spending on. I decided to hire a private investigator, PI, to find out the truth. The PI went to work and about two weeks ago, he brought back his findings. Nothing could have prepared me for what I saw. The PI uncovered something entirely different. He even provided me with pictures of Emily and her coworker together. It turns out that Emily had been using my money to finance expensive dates with her so-called co-worker. Another shocking revelation was that the said co-worker was actually her boyfriend, and they had been dating even before I came into the picture. I was shocked, angry, and disappointed that I let something like this happen to me. They even had a routine of going to one fancy restaurant bi-weekly on Friday nights. Next week, I got to the restaurant first and waited for them. I came with the pictures and everything. You should see how she turned white upon seeing me. She first tried to lie her way through saying they had come there to talk about work. But when I showed her the pictures, she started begging not to make a scene. We were already turning a few heads around so I just ignored her and kept rolling. She said she was sorry and that she didn't know what came over her. She also said she had broken up with her coworker, but she only got back with him some weeks ago. I spread the pics on their table and said they should enjoy the rest of the evening looking at them. I didn't even wait for her to call or anything. I blocked her on all platforms and decided to take a short trip somewhere in case she comes to my place. I still can't believe she had to lie about everything. It was very unnecessary. Edit. Emily didn't even have a job. She wasn't working at any firm and I wasn't the only guy she was dating. She had about two other guys who were paying for her and her boyfriend. Update. I took your advice and put together proof for all the money I loaned her. Then I sent her a message. Either she pays or me and the other two guys would report her and her boyfriend to the police for scamming. She has since been messaging incessantly saying they have no money and she can't pay me back. That it's not gentlemanly to ask for gifted money back. I guess it's ladylike to scam men. I don't really wish to follow through with my threat, but I wish this will rain a holy terror upon her life. I'm sorry this happened to you, OP. People like Emily deserve the worst. I cannot believe all she did with all that money was go on fancy dates. She could have spent the money more creatively, but instead, she spent all of it or most of it on fancy dates with her boyfriend. I'm glad you thought about hiring a PI. If you didn't, then you would probably still be her ATM. 
I hope your next relationship will be a much better one for you. Good luck, OP. Story 2 My wife had an affair. It started last April and lasted until November. She said she had sex with the guy in question on two occasions, late October and early November. We've been married since 2005, together since 2003. We're in our mid-30s and have two kids together. A four and six-year-old. Right now, they're the only thing keeping us together. I first noticed a problem in June. She was talking to an old boyfriend who had just broken up with his wife. Obviously, there were some unresolved feelings between the two. I started feeling uncomfortable in June, but when I brought it up with the wife, she always said it was nothing. In July, she visited him a couple of times, but she assured me nothing was happening. I started getting suspicious and snooped through her email, finding a couple of emails where he told her what he wanted to do to her. I confronted her about them, and she said it was one-sided and she had admonished him. I asked her to stop talking to him, but she insisted nothing was going on, and then got mad at me for telling her what to do. She had a lower sex drive than I did, but suddenly over the summer she was insatiable. Sensing something was off, we started going to therapy together. The therapist told us that she was getting attention that I haven't been giving her and she was flattered. The solution, our therapist said, was for me to start giving my wife that attention. So I did. I'd ask about her day, I'd give her more compliments, and I tried giving her more space. I had always had the kids a lot. I loved spending time with them and I knew that she had a hard time with them, so I took them a lot. Out to the movies, to play dates, kept them at home so my wife could go to conferences. Things didn't get better. The guy she was talking to doesn't have anything to do but talk to my wife, so he would spend hours a day texting, writing emails, and chatting. I was at a disadvantage because I have a job. For the months of July and August, I checked our phone bill and she had sent 8,000 texts each month. She was always on her phone. I got more and more frustrated and helpless and that came out in the form of anger. We had fights nearly daily, most of them were about her talking to this douchebag. I snooped more and more, looking at her email and text messages. She deleted chat logs and used passwords I didn't know to lock her Skype account. By the time September came around, we weren't having sex at all. She said she thought it was unfair that this guy was flattering her and she was having sex with me. She knew something was off. I asked her if sex with me was cheating on this other guy and she got mad at me. Our therapist told us to take a break for one week each. Time away from the family and kids. When we returned, nothing had changed and we were drifting further and further apart. I told her that I considered what she was doing an affair and by continuing down that road she was breaking our marriage. But still, the affair continued. October and November were hell. My contract with work was up for renewal and I was scared that the distractions were affecting my work performance. I felt like I went through a breakup, my wife was gone, off with some other guy. In November, she admitted to having phone sex and video sex with him. I left and spent a week at my best friend's house. I remember the two times she cheated. The first time, she went to a conference a day early. I brought the family to see her and I could sense something was off. I didn't want to talk to her or look her in the eye. She insisted on a hug and I felt dirty. The second was about two weeks later. I went to a conference and she went to visit him. We had sex a few weeks after that and I could barely maintain an erection. I felt like he was there. I was inside my wife but he was somehow between us. I told her I felt this way and she didn't say much. She only admitted to cheating a few weeks ago. The guy had come on the day she went early. I left the house and told her things were over. I was away in early December for a work trip. I went a few days early to check out the city and get my mind off my problems. I ended up hooking up with two girls on separate occasions. I told women who asked if I was married that my wife cheated and I was single. Yes, technically I cheated without knowing my wife did, but shit was effed up, you know? When my wife told me that things got physical between her and the douchebag, I told her about my trip. We went to therapy together and she told us to take a month or two off. My wife told my therapist that she loves me and wants to work it out, and that she was sorry for how things went down. My friend visited this weekend and said that my wife seems really sad. I'm conflicted to say the least. 
If there weren't kids, I would have bailed a while ago. Our therapist said that we both brought baggage to the relationship and we should try to fix the problem. We would only repeat our mistakes with the next person if we didn't. She wasn't advocating against breaking up, just fixing the issue. So with that in mind, I worked out our issues, but I don't know how to get over this. It feels too big of a problem to deal with. She assures me things are over with that idiot and she wants me to come home. The night I left, I had a friend pick me up. He told me to go out and hook up with some girls, so I made an OK Cupid profile. I had a whole bunch of girls contact me and I've set up a few dates. The first is this Wednesday. The girls I'm meeting all seem really cool. They own their own businesses, they've accomplished something in their life on their own, they're all super attractive to me. I feel attractive and desired for the first time in a long time. I feel like I'm in high demand and I'm loving it. When faced with the choice of dating a bunch of girls and my cheating wife, the decision doesn't seem very difficult. I know it sounds like I should move on, but I'm an introvert and tend to overanalyze. If I were to have another go with the wife, how do you move on from something like this? I would sure as hell miss seeing my kids grow up half the time. Do I love my wife? I'm not sure. I feel a lot of hurt and betrayal. It's hard to look at her with loving warmth. The therapist is telling us to take time apart to give ourselves a chance to heal and see if we still love each other after the hurt has passed. I can feel that my wife is making an effort, but it might be too little too late. I'm sorry this happened to your marriage, OP. I think it's best if you end things with her. You've both messed up way too much to just go back to being married. Even though your wife started all these and she ruins your marriage first, I would say you joined her in on it too. And I bet right now, even if you were to work on the marriage, you wouldn't put your all into making it work because a big part of you is done and is ready to start a new chapter with new people. Your therapist didn't help much from what you've written here. If you do insist on trying to fix your marriage, I would recommend you both go for individual therapy and you change your old therapist. Now for some comments. OP, first of all, your therapist is a moron. Secondly, your wife effed up and that sucks for her, but you need to move on with your life. I'd say get the divorce papers in order and have fun on your dates. Nah, don't work it out. You're young. Be a great dad and move on with all these great, exciting things you're doing. The foundation your relationship was based on has been shattered by her. You'll never really rebuild it. You'll just be wondering who else is slipping it to her. Look, as a fellow introvert who goes into the fetal position in the presence of a female, I can relate to the fear of not finding someone. But getting back together and rebuilding a relationship requires one thing, and that's love. Followed by trust, something only she can make the effort to rebuild and not something you have control over. Which I don't think you feel. Seems like you're more afraid than in love. People make mistakes. We are after all human. Just don't make the mistake of rebuilding a relationship with someone you don't love.